Okay, this is a new enemy. I haven't seen this enemy before. Okay, this is going to be kind of... <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so that's the legendary encounter right there. That's the boss. Did I just attack the boss? Hello and welcome to Tainted Grail. This video is kindly sponsored by the developers. And if you'd like to check out the game and its new update, Seeds of Corruption, there is a link in the description. And let me just tell you something real quick before we begin. I've been playing this off screen uh, for no, no particular reason. I literally just got carried away. And that's the kind of game it is. <laughs> you kind of get uh, get very invested in it. And we're going to be starting a new run right here. It has been updated so significantly since the last time I played it. And they've only released this game three months ago into early access. And it has already received so many updates. I can't even believe it. Anyway, you have three different classes here. You have Pathfinder, Weird Hunter, and Berserker. All of these have different things. They also have a, a, another class over here, which I don't think we can currently play as, unfortunately, but they're going to be adding more classes, I assume. And uh, all of these have very different, unique playstyles. I love the Pathfinder so far. I feel like the Pathfinder is definitely my kind of playstyle. But you have the Berserker here. They gain additional energy when their health drops below 50%, so they basically have to try and balance their health and their other resources together. And then you have the Weird Hunter. When an enemy is marked six times, it becomes vulnerable, and damage dealt to vulnerable enemies is doubled. Yeah, that's really, really powerful as well, especially with multi-hit attacks. Then you have the Pathfinder here, which I personally like the most. Becoming focused increases the damage they deal by 50% and grows with each turn they manage to stay unharmed. So it's much more of a defensive playstyle, but you play more defensively to become more offensive as the turns pass. So we're going to be playing as this guy. As you can see, I've actually already played him a little bit. 25% progress summary. And by the way, there's also... Uh, a number of customization options that we're going to be able to select here as well. So for example, you can play as a man or a woman. If you so desire, you can change your character name. I was actually play playing as the power of bread name because, well, well, why not? And then you obviously have your skin colors here. You have your hairstyles. There's a variety here. I'm going to be selecting this one, I guess. And then you obviously have facial hair too. I like the full beard. I think the full beard is pretty cool. And then there's a a literal color picker for your facial hair and indeed your your head hair as well. So you can literally have a purple beard if you want, which I think we are most likely going to be taking because it is great to have that option. Otherwise, you have a number of tattoos here as well. I think we're going to probably be going with this one. I think this one looks cool. Then you also have a tattoo color picker, color picker as well, which is just crazy. Absolutely crazy. And then you have wardrobe. This unlocks only after you've done um, a few runs here and there. And I haven't even finished a run yet. And I've been playing for about an hour and a half. And I was just enjoying myself so much that I just wanted to continue playing. So <laughs> that's the, the, yeah, that, as I say, that's the kind of game it is. Anyway, let's start the game and we will go in. By the way, this corruption level right here, this basically determines what kind of difficulty you're going to be facing. You can't select anything but corruption level one initially, but as you finish runs and, and become more competent at the game, you're going to unlock higher and higher corruptions up to corruption level five which is indeed going to be very difficult. All right, we're gonna venture into the weirdness. Now, the weirdness is a little bit different from previous versions, because I have played Tainted Grail before on the channel, and if you'd like to check out the previous videos of that, then you can in the description. Otherwise, they've changed the weirdness graphical style. It used to, it used to be like a mist of some kind, and now it is much more of a distortion, and I feel like that much more accurately represents what the weirdness is actually all about. And there is a new story and a whole bunch of new voiceovers and all kinds of crazy improvements that they've done. And the tutorial, let me just tell you, the tutorial when you first boot up the game is actually really, really good. And it gives you a massive amount of backstory and lore about the Arthurian legends and about Arthur and about Merlin. And yeah, you've just got a whole bunch of stuff going on there. So anyway, we're going to be using small strikes for the most part right here and just basically trying to prevent ourselves from taking any damage. As you can see, however, this guy doesn't really do anything right now. He's just applying buffs to himself. As you can see, he's actually put growing scales on him. The thick carapace of this creature is growing before your eyes. Plus 15 armor. 
And uh, that's not really going to help him out too much because now he's going to split into two, which I, of course, saved my small strikes for. And we're just going to eliminate another one. Now, bear in mind that I will gain focused every single turn I don't take any damage as the Pathfinder. So generally, as I've said before, you do want to stay much more defensive. Uh, yeah, by the way, I, I will explain a number of the other systems that is currently going on here. Like, for example, the various pieces of loot that we gain and that rune stone that we also gained. So this rune stone right here, this is a whole new system that they have implemented. Well, generally they had rune stones before, but they've revamped the system. And basically you can get rune stones from all kinds of different things. You can get it from merchants, you can get it from random drops, and I assume you could probably get it from bosses as well. I have killed one boss and um, well, I think, I think it did drop a very powerful runestone, so it's pretty cool. Anyway, you have a different quality of runestones as well. You have tier one, tier two, and tier three, and they obviously have different effects and stuff like that. So as you can see here, we have three slots. We have three slots in armor, three slots in weapons, and each particular runestone does something different dependent on where you slot it into. So for example, this is not the best runestone, I gotta say. But if you put this in the weapon slot, it will duplicate every 20th card played in a single combat, which <laughs> uh, if the combat lasts a long time, then this is obviously great. But early on, this is probably not going to really work out too well for us. But otherwise, if you put it in the armor slot, then you will heal for 1% of your maximum HP after every, uh, every victory. Personally, I don't think that this is that good. However, what you can do is you can combine rune stones when you have three of the same type, and then it will advance it to the next tier, which is actually very good. Now, if you can find the merchant, then you're going to be able to upgrade your rune stones by just purely buying them out with your current wealth. You gain wealth after every single victory in battle and uh, hopefully we're going to be able to accrue quite a bit as time goes on okay so this is going to be a little bit difficult for me i don't think i'm going to be able to block every single attack here but i'm going to have to try my best uh now th th that's the problem you can't always block everything so you're just going to have to try as much as you can i'm just going to do small strikes here just to do a little bit of extra damage and they've also added a nice quality of life improvement it used to be that you had to click end turn every single time you ended your turn but they've actually added a key bind for that and it is now t which is really easy to to press and it just makes it so much nicer it really is much much better anyway uh hmm this is going to be a bit problematic isn't it uh, okay well i guess i'm just going to do small strikes and we'll just do another small strikes and we'll just try to do as much damage as we can but i am going to take a little bit of damage here as a result and we're not going to get focused we're not going to get focused ah here we go here we go we're now starting to get to the point where the pathfinder might actually start helping us out a little bit with its unique ability and we'll see there we go okay so yeah as you can see focus plus 50 percent damage dealt and it stacks every single turn you don't take damage bear that in mind so it is very very useful anyway i'm going to use stand your ground and we're going to stun this one now now that might seem a little bit weird me stunning the middle one because this one does more damage right well i'm going to block in the entire attack of this guy but he actually attacks everything in the area so if i block all of that damage he's just going to kill his friends and i don't have to worry about him so much this guy however is just going to be attacking us so obviously stunning him makes the most sense now i do have a unique ability as well this is my unique ability as the pathfinder every single time you use a stance type card in other words blocking cards and defensive cards and so on you're going to gain one uh, one ultimate charge, basically. And every every three ultimate charges, you're going to be able to pull one card and gain one energy. And it is just going to result in a wonderful, wonderful loop of endless cards and endless energy as long as you have the right deck set up and all that stuff. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Otherwise, I'm going to basically just do this. We'll do small strikes. We might actually kill the peasant. Ah, we didn't kill the peasant, unfortunately, but I already have a block, so I'm just going to finish off the peasant here, and then we'll go to the next turn. This is going to be a done deal now. I have 150% increased damage, 
And that is it. Done. And we have now leveled up. And look at this. We gain weird stones. Okay, so weird stones are the currency in the roguelike mode, which is known as Conquest in Tainted Grail. And you can use these to purchase permanent upgrades that will persist through your runs. So if you do have a, a death on your hands, then you don't have to worry too much because you're going to be able to use these weird stones to upgrade yourself. Oh, this is actually a very nice, in my opinion... Um, a very nice um, runestone here. I hope that I'll be able to use it in just a second. Refreshing Breeze is actually really nice. Breath Control is fantastic. I'm actually going to be taking Breath Control. This is really, really good. You'll see exactly why I say that very soon. I'm going to take Target Block. Ooh, here we go. Okay, so... You can pick passive skills every level, and you can also pick additional cards and stuff. So let's have a look. Tactic movement. For every stance card you play, gain 5 armor at 5% damage until the end of the turn. That is probably going to be quite important, because we're usually going to be using stance cards before offensive cards, because we want to make sure that we have all the blocks set up for that particular turn before we actually commit to anything specific. Anyway... The statue you find on your path is the ultimate proof that humans will survive on this island, at least for long enough that carving enormous silhouettes out of stone will make sense to them. It must have been a king or a lord, but there are no markings that could help you understand who deserved such praise. All right, so here we go. We can pay our respects. Ah, press F. Okay, so random stat boost for 20% of your HP. Boom. Okay, I gained 10 armor. Nice. I'm actually perfectly happy to, um, to, to to trade that. That actually seems like a pretty good idea to me because I can actually use this strong healing elixir that I looted. And now I'm back up at full HP. So I am doing very nicely indeed. As you can see, you can also zoom out really heavily right here as well. So if you want to see a much bigger overview of what's going on, then you can, of course, do that. And then you have more of a third person view as well, which is actually really nice too. And I was actually just about to speak to the confident priestess, but unfortunately the enemy wanted to attack us first and try to nom our faces off. Let's try to prevent that from happening, shall we? Okay, so... Hmm, yes, target block is absolutely fine. Just going to block that, and then we'll just do a regular block. And then I should be able to do a little bit of small strikes right here. There we are. Easy enough, easy enough. Okay, so now we've gained focus. This is going to be super good. We can, once again, just do stand our ground, and then we will gain additional damage as a result of that. Bear that in mind, additional damage from tactic movement. It gives us plus, plus five armor and all that wonderful stuff too. So it's really synergistic with our current class selection, which I very much appreciate. All right, so breath control. Now, this is the reason why I said this was really good. Basically, what I can do here is I can use this, and then I can basically use every single class card in my hand, and it's done. I can use all of them. Boom, look at that, all zero. That is insane. So we're just going to be doing that, and boom, 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 and we're going to be attacking this guy. Oh, almost killed him, almost killed him. Now what I could do is I could literally use my ultimate ability, which I think I will just so I can show you what it's all about, and boom, there you go. I actually have the ability to now do something else, so I'm just going to kill that one, and then we can move on and then just kill that one. Yeah, easy enough, right? Yeah, easy enough. Now I got pretty far with the first character that I played as, which was indeed a weird hunter, and that's the guy that applies the vulnerable debuff to the opponent when you hit it six times. And it is very, very powerful, gotta say that, very powerful. I'm gonna take meditation here because that gives you plus three energy on the next turn, very important. And now we have another passive skill to select. Whenever you use an ultimate ability, draw three additional cards. At the start of each turn, gain one ultimate charge. That actually seems like a much better thing, although pulling additional cards, especially with the ultimate ability, is going to be pretty good already. I'm going to go for stay prepared, though, because I think that getting more ultimate charges is going to be just that slight bit more useful. But... I could be wrong, it really depends. All right, so let's speak to the confident priestess. Ah, we can ask to be healed. Personally, I don't think we really want to do that just yet because I'm already doing pretty nicely in terms of my HP value, so shouldn't have to worry too much about that. Otherwise, let's just continue moving through the weirdness. Who's this? Oh, never mind, it's actually an enemy. <laughs> All right, so technically what I can also do is I can use the weird candle, by the way. I can use the weird candle to 
prevent myself from fighting in weirdness, but I found so far that it's actually not too bad to run around and uh, just see what's going on, basically. And you are going to get more rewards from fighting in the weirdness as well. So anyway, I'm going to stun this guy. Actually, you know what? I'm going to stun this guy because he's going to do multiple attacks. And then we're just going to do stand our ground. There we go. And he's going to get blocked as a result of that. Places rune stones that heal all enemies upon being destroyed. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. Okay, so he's actually attacking us again. Ah, that is actually kind of unfortunate. I was hopeful that he would not be doing that and that they would do something different. But that doesn't seem to be the case. So I think what I'm going to do is just do this. And then I'm going to take the damage from the peasant. And I'm literally going to set up a huge attack in the next turn. So we're going to just do that. We're going to lose focus as a result of this, but it's it's nothing that I can do anything about. All right, so here we go. Now we can use Breath Control. We can use Stand Your Ground. And then we can potentially use our ultimate ability. But I don't know whether I really want to do that. You know what? I'm going to use my ultimate ability first, and then I will use Breath Control. Boom. Now we have five energy, and every single one of my cards, with the exception of Stun, is costing zero, which is amazing. It, it absolutely is. And I believe you can actually use, can you, ah, once per round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't use your ultimate ability multiple times in one turn, which would be very imbalanced, obviously, but you know, I tried it anyway. Okay, so let's see if I can do some damage here. Just a little bit, just a little bit of damage. I want to try and kill the peasant as soon as possible because that is the most annoying one to deal with. I'm actually going to stun this guy so that he doesn't do whatever he wants to do. And we're just going to go to the next turn. There we go. All right, so now they've gone to single hits, which is great. Unfortunately, I don't have another blocking card. So I'm going to try to use my ultimate ability. Yes, there's another blocking card. Fantastic. Now we have two additional energy. And I can use small strikes to deal some more damage. And I'm going to, once again, block both of their attacks. And now we have 100% increased damage. And that means that I'll be able to use stand your ground, stand your ground, and then small strikes. And this is basically the gameplay loop of the Pathfinder. You want to be thinking on your feet basically all the time with this class, and I love it so much. It really is a lot of dynamic actions in a row, and you kind of... You do have to decide quite a bit on what you're doing. You know, it's that's a lot of um, a lot of uh, I don't know. It's a lot of strategy involved, and it really does make a big difference to your enjoyment. The Weird Hunter is also like that, hilariously enough. I mean, it seems like most of the classes are very much of uh, obviously strategic, and um, you have to decide on a number of things when you are playing them. But the Weird Hunter did seem a little bit more offensive based, obviously. I mean, it is supposed to be more of an offensive character. And, uh, well, I, I guess you're just going to have to give it a go yourself. Because I, I personally feel like Tainted Grail has come so far from what it was previously. It's just crazy how much work they have done in such a short space of time. Anyway... Let's see if we can just absorb this. There we go. Uh, having only one enemy really makes things very simple indeed. There we go. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I think I might actually be able to just win this outright just from now. So let me actually just have a look. I might be able to. Yep. <laughs> crazy, crazy amounts of damage right there. Yeah, I mean, that's the point. If you can take no damage, you're going to be doing absolutely fine. All right, so I'm going to take Breathe here. Breathe is, in my opinion, one of the best cards in the entire game. Because especially even for a Weird Hunter, for a Pathfinder, this is just the most synergistic card you're ever going to see. One block, and then you gain one energy next turn. It is just a much better version of Stand Your Ground, and you want as many Breathe cards as you can possibly get your hands on, at least in my opinion. And we finally made it to a milestone, so I can actually light a weird candle here, and now we can take a look at some of the other people around here too, and we can actually see the map as well, because obviously without lighting these things up, you can't really see the map that well. So anyway, let's go in here and see if we can do some more fisticuffs. All right, so we got Breathe, and uh, this guy's going to be attacking twice. You can see the attack order in the top left as well. They've actually added that as a quality of life improvement, and we're going to be doing Breathe. 
Then we'll do target block as well. And then we'll just do a regular attack. There we go. And I think I'll do meditation. Then we'll do small strikes because we're going to gain a huge amount of energy next turn. Although it's not even necessary because of focus. Yep. <laughs> not even necessary. And that's the point. If you're not fighting in weirdness, then the fights are quite a lot easier. So if you want to have a, a slightly easier time of things, then you can, of course, do as I've done and light up one of these milestones. And then every fight in your radius is going to be pretty, pretty significantly easier. But anyway, uh, what I'd like to do is actually go to the rune stones because we actually have a couple here. Now, the duplicate is something that I saw activate, I think, the battle before last, and it seems pretty good, actually. It seems pretty nice, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to increase my damage by 3. I'd personally prefer that, and otherwise, let's see, reduces the max HP of all enemies by 3%, reflect 5% of damage received, and at the start of your turn, deal 1 hit for 5 damage to all enemies. I personally feel like that is much better for our armor here. So it seems like Gar is the runestone that I very much like using in both slots even. Kind of weird. Oh well. Yeah, kind of weird. Weird stones, weirdness. Yeah, you get it? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, anyway, I'll show myself out. All right, there we go. But look at that, five damage instantly. Look at that, that was pretty cool. Okay, so now we're gonna be attacked twice. So I'm gonna use breathe, stand your ground, and then small strikes. Obviously, we're gonna be we're gonna be using tactical movement and it's gonna get us a whole bunch of extra bonuses as well. And there you go, look at that. I killed that thing literally just with that new, with that new rune stone. It's, oh, it's just so good. It's just so good, okay. So let's try and kill this thing so that this thing will get blocked. Actually, I. Probably, uh, yep, no, never mind. I have just one. Yes. The Pathfinder, once it gets going, is very powerful indeed. Okay, in armor slot gain, plus 25% maximum HP, reduce armor of all enemies by five. That means that if an enemy has zero armor and you reduce their armor to negative 5% rela uh, relation, negative 5% armor, then you're going to do 5% more damage. That's it. So it, uh, it actually helps out quite a bit. Anyway, it seems your gift did help this man survive, but now the weird candle he got from you is almost extinguished. Ah, yeah, so um, I don't know whether you saw that in this run, or maybe I did it in a previous run, but this guy, I gave a weird candle to him so that he was able to potentially rescue some people that he wanted to. Anyway. Gods have sent you to help me with my search. Please, can I have one more candle? Ah, he wants one more candle. Maybe he's right. Maybe it's more than just a coincidence. I'm going to give him another weird candle. Thank you. I hope we'll meet again. He goes on with his search. Well, yeah, I very much hope that we will see you again, sir. I don't really mind personally about fighting in weirdness. I think that it's actually quite fun fighting in the weirdness. So I'm pretty happy to just provide weird candles wherever. I know a lot of people in the past have said to me, hey, why are you, you know, why are you not using your weird candles to, you know, light up these things and, and everything? But um, I generally think that it is more interesting to play in the weirdness. But anyway, you enter the old cemetery located deep in the forest. Seeing it reminds you of more peaceful days when people had the luxury of burying their dead properly and often returned to pay respects. After a while, an unnerving realization breaks through this nostalgia. The cemetery is not a place you should linger, being so close to the weirdness. The breeze whispers your name. Whether wind or weirdness, better not stay here long. Loot the graves. It certainly isn't an honorable thing to do, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Who cares for honor when survival is at stake? All right, so we gained a strong healing elixir, which is actually really powerful, and the acid flask is also super powerful too. That reduces armor by uh, 75% on a single opponent for four turns. Yeah, pretty significant bonus right there, yeah? Yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, let's go into the next fight. And I believe we're actually almost to the first boss, which is going to be a very large golem, I think. So that's gonna be interesting. Otherwise, this guy is not even going to be attacking us. He's just preparing for a special attack. So I will use meditate. Should I wait, wait a minute? I should probably use breath control. Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to use meditation. And then I will just do... Uh, just do small strikes. 
and then we'll just continue onward. I think we can probably kill him. Yep. <laughs> so simple. So simple. Oh, yes. Okay, and a Tome of Knowledge. Okay, so I don't know whether you've noticed, but there is a, a couple of different menus here. There's combat items and there's quick slots. So quick slots, you use those on the world map, so you can basically use your weird candle or your travel map or a healing elixir on the world map when you're not in combat. Whereas combat items, these are the things that you have access to when you're actually fighting something. So for example, if you wanted to draw two additional cards, I would, for example, put this on here, like so. And you can increase your combat item uh, capacity by doing certain things. But otherwise, that's it. And now I can move on. Obviously, you can go into inventory at any time to change it around and you know customize it however you so desire. So let's... Uh, uh, there's the golem, by the way. And uh, there's an armed wanderer. And there's a pack of enemies just before it. The armed wanderer is going to be quite interesting to speak to. Because I think I've spoken to a legged wanderer beforehand. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes, okay. Mm, I will really let myself out now. Alright, so let's do meditation. Unfortunately, this is not really going to give me that much benefit because I don't have a blocking card of any kind. So he is going to attack me and then I'm not going to get focused. But can't really do much about that right now. We're going to use breathe and then we'll just use a regular attack and then we'll just end the turn straight away, I think. Just so that we can get small strikes off. There we go. Nice. Okay, so next three attacks deal double damage as well. Consecrated Oil is super, super powerful, so that's really nice too. If you have a lot of focus stacks, so let's say you have like, I don't know, four or five focus stacks, you're going to be doing so much extra damage, and then you double that? Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Anyway, this is also an extremely good runestone right here. Drawing one extra card every single turn, the... the the amount of value that you get out of that is exponential and definitely might be something that I will want to spec into actually. I think I might want to take that instead of this one. Even though I really love this for being able to increase damage by three, I think it really makes a huge difference, especially on small strikes cards because obviously they hit multiple times and being able to increase each hit by three is actually pretty significant damage increase. Anyway, one weapon in his hand, one weapon on his back. This strikes you as a bit excessive unless he's a traveling weaponsmith. The blood ca covering his leather jerkin is not his. A good sign that means he can take care of himself. Oh, you get any stupid ideas. I used to be a master of arms at Halfway. Trained many young warriors there. If you have any gold to spare, I might teach you a thing or two. He makes a gesture suggesting that his teachings won't come for free, though. Ah, all right, so we can learn a special technique. Mark one card as always in first hand. Wow. Yeah, that is super, super good. And it requires 250 wealth. I only have 157, as you can see, so that's not going to work. But we might be able to learn a new skill or we can learn a secret move. Uh, I think I'm actually going to be learning a new skill. I think that sounds fun. Soon you're drenched in sweat and covered in bruises. All right, so here we go. Mmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna take rearrangement. I think this one is really good. If this can reduce the cost of the card by one and reduces it to zero, this is very, very powerful. So hopefully we'll do that. All right, so here we go. This is going to be the final battle in this level. Uh, there's the confident priestess. I could potentially go over there and have her heal me. But I don't think it's necessary, to be honest, because I could just take a little bit of a healing potion. I'll take a little bit of a healing potion, and actually, I might need healing potions in the fight. I doubt it, because I have fought this guy before as the weird hunter, and I did pretty well. Um, but this is a different class entirely, and I haven't fought this guy before on this class. So it might be a bit difficult. Anyway, let's have a look. Alright, so we're going to just do... Small strikes, and then we'll just do attack. He's going to attack once. This should be a pretty simple fight for us because it's just one guy. But if you don't get any blocking cards or you can't stun him that easily, he's immune to stun as well, by the way. So that's obviously a bit of a problem. Okay, so we're going to draw two cards. Uh, yes, it does reduce cards that are one energy back to uh, zero, which is actually really nice. Okay, so this is a bit problematic. Hmm. Ah, uh, I'm gonna have to do... 
Yeah, I can't stun him and he's going to hit me. Yeah, he is actually going to hit me here, which is really, ah, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of grinding my gears right now. It's kind of grinding my gears, but I, I could, I guess, pull a card and then maybe hope. Nope, that's not going to work. All right, so I guess what I'll do instead is literally just do breath control and then just try to go all out with the amount of damage that I can do right here. So let's do small strikes, massive, massive damage coming out from us right here. But if only I had just gotten one blocking card. That's the reason why certain NPCs do allow you the ability to remove cards from your deck so that you can more accurately, um, well, do these kinds of things where you don't um, pull a bunch of offensive cards instead uh, of, the, of the cards that you actually want. So I'm just going to continue using um, stance cards to charge up my ultimate ability. That's basically it, because if I don't have focus on, I don't do that much damage. So it is much better, in my opinion at least, to uh, just be a little bit cautious on those things. So anyway, I'm just going to use standard ground right here. Small strikes is free right there. And we'll use another one. And we've already got block on us as well. So I can basically just continue wailing on the guy quite a bit. All right, so here we go. Now he's going to attack us twice. Do I have two block cards? Yes, indeed I do. Fantastic. That's perfect. So now I will block twice. And then we will do small strikes for massive damage, as you can see. And now I almost have my ultimate ability at maximum charges, which is most likely going to happen next turn. And I should be able to eliminate him because I have 150% increased damage dealt. So hopefully that's going to work out. All right, let's do Pathfinder. Let's pull some more cards. Let's use Breath Control. Now everything is free. Oh yes, everything is free. Isn't this crazy? Yeah. This is super, super crazy. I, this is the reason why I love the Pathfinder, because it just has so much synergy. I'm going to use the stun just for the sake of nothingness, really. It doesn't really make any difference if I use it or not. But the amount of damage that you can get from the Pathfinder in this situation is so, so good. It's just so much fun. Anyway, there you go. Massive amounts of experience, wealth, and some pretty decent amount of weird stones, too. And we gained a bunch of different weird candles, too. And we gain some more rune stones. Okay, so cracked lore. I believe I have a bunch of those already. I actually have two of those. I have some seagull ones as well. But I don't have three of each just yet. So we're going to have to wait a little bit to combine some. All right, so uh, all in is probably going to be what I will take. Because that is indeed a stance card. I'm, I'm basically just going for stance cards pretty much all the time. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go for oh, quick attacks actually pretty uh, yeah, quick attacks actually pretty cool because deal one hit for hundred percent damage and draw one card. That could be very useful when using breath control because if I have breath control in my hand and I pull this for free or something like that, then I could just draw a card and then be able to use breath control on the the new card that comes into my hand and then it's free. So it's great. So I'll probably do that. Whenever you fight a single enemy, gain plus one energy at the start of the turn. On every sixth card played, draw one additional turn. I'm going to go for one-on-one, -on -one, I think. This situation feels like an echo of something that happened before. The only thing you're left with is a strange power you feel growing in you. Ooh, I can now... Ah, oh, this, oh, this is fantastic. Okay, so because I have completed the first boss, I now have the opportunity to remove two cards from the deck, unlock a new weapon slot for runestones, or unlock a new armor slot for runestones. Personally, I think that unlocking a new weapon slot is probably going to be what I'll take. Even though removing two cards from the deck is really, really powerful, I think the way that uh, the way that we've done it here is probably going to be the most beneficial for us because then I will be able to basically put something else in here like reducing the armor of all enemies, for example, or increasing damage by three, which I very much like. So we could do that. I think that seems pretty fun. So that's what we'll do. And now we're going to go over to the Confident Priestess because I would love to be able to heal up a little bit. Inquire further. Yeah, she's just going to say that she's searching for something and we're just going to ask for healing. I could get a legendary card here, but legendary cards are a little bit weird for me, so I'm actually just going to take the healing potion. I personally prefer to have more of a... Uh, shall we say... Uh, more of a assured reward, because I don't know what the legendary card is going to be, so it could very well 
not work out in our favor. But otherwise, let's move over here. Is there anything here that I can interact with? No. Oh, it doesn't seem... No, it doesn't seem like it. I actually thought that I found a secret there for a second, but no, no. And now we have ventured into the new area in the weirdness, and we're going to be fighting some more enemies along the way. Now, I haven't fought the second boss yet, so I'm actually really intrigued about what it might be, and hopefully we'll be able to do something about that. Anyway, I'm going to use rearrangement here. Oh, that's exactly what I was talking about. Look at that. This is just a complete free attack. Nothing to worry about whatsoever, and it's going to ga gain me one additional card. I still have three energy, by the way, so I can now use Breath Control. And this gives me All In for free as well, which gives me additional 50% damage. And then I can just use, well, as you can quite clearly tell, Absolute Murder. Oh yes, Absolute Murder. I'm going to be just be using Stand My Ground all over the place. Then we'll just use our ultimate ability, and hopefully this will be a kill for both of these. There we go. Done. And that was it. That was that was the first turn. Wasn't that the first turn? Yeah. If you get everything that you need to do that, it is so incredibly fun. All right. So runestones. I now have three of the one that I really like. So we're going to be seeing what we can do about uh, combining that. So let's have a look. There we are. Okay. So combine runestones. There we are. Nice. Okay, so that is now a tier 2, and as you can see, it now increases damage by 6 for our weapon, but otherwise, at the start of your turn, you deal 1 hit to do 10 damage to all enemies, which I think we're actually going to be taking. I think 6 damage for the weapon is good, but I think in general the armor thing is just a little bit better, just a little bit better. Okay, so... Reduce the armor of all enemies by five, I think is going to be quite nice for our weapon slot as well. And otherwise, let's move on. All right, so uh, as you can see by the map, there is actually a guide telling us which way to go and what to do and so on and so forth, because obviously we do have a number of um, potential areas and objective, objectives to explore and complete. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. And we also have, oh, Okay, this is a new enemy. I haven't seen this enemy before. Okay, this is going to be kind of... <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so it's not immune. For a specter, it hits hard. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I will use breath control. And then we will do all in. And then we'll do target block and all this other stuff. And uh, we can, of course, stun it as well, but it doesn't really make any difference, to be honest. Okay, so now we can use Quick Attack. Do we have anything else here that I can really use? I could use Rearrangement. I think I'll use Rearrangement right here. Breathe is fantastic card, really is good. And I'll use Quick Attack just to gain an additional card here as well. It's not its not actually doing anything. Enemy's intent is unknown. Okay, this is kind of interesting. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to burst through its shield before it does whatever it wants to do going to use my ultimate ability to to try and prevent it from doing that and there you go nice that was exactly what we wanted now my one-on-one -on -one skill is actually coming in handy because doing one-on-one -on -one battles increases my power by a pretty significant amount so i'm happy with that otherwise who do we have here ah this is the runestone seller fellow yes you can buy runestones from this guy and as you can see he sells very good ones he's got some rare ones he's got some tier three even as you can see look at this increases damage by 30 percent if you can believe that oh that's crazy that is really really good all right so you also have this here as well technically i could buy this and then i could put two of these in my armor if i have if i had an additional runestone armor slot this is fantastic though as you can quite clearly tell at the start of your turn deal one hit for 30 damage to all enemies i can't even imagine how powerful that's going to be unfortunately i don't have enough to be able to do that i would actually like to sell this yes there we go okay uh i could also sell a bunch of other stuff too which might make sense shall i shall i try to get to 650 <laughs> Uh, I mean, if I could do that, uh, that would be amazing, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. I'll keep like one of each item or something like that. I mean, most of these are not really that um, important for me at the moment. As I level up in Corruption, then I will definitely need 
uh, something. Uh, 517, yeah, I really do not have enough, unfortunately. I mean, I could sell this and increase his armor. That's pretty good. Uh, that's also pretty good. I mean, what is it now? I need 650. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get enough. I have 559, so I basically need another 100 wealth to be able to buy that really, really good one. So maybe I will be able to. Let's just continue to adventure, and I might be able to run across some additional wealth, as you can see. There are random little places on the, on the ground where you can uncover certain bits of wealth. Okay, so that's the legendary encounter right there. That's the boss. Did I just attack the boss? I... I hope not. No. I attacked one of these guys. Okay, good to know. <laughs> Phew! That was a little bit close. A little bit close for my liking. Okay, let's use rearrangement right here. Okay, small strikes is pretty good. We're, we're gonna just use our stance cards first, though. I'm gonna use this for free. Because every single time I use a stance card, it's going to give me 5% increased damage. But I do want to use more of these first. So let's just attack with this. There we go. Okay. Oh, it healed. Okay, it healed its barrier, and now it's going to deal <laughs> 40 to 60 damage. Okay. Calm down now. Thank you. Oh, dear. Yeah, well, this is actually not even going to be that big a deal because I can just use breath control and then we can stun it or whatever. And we have a huge amount of, um, well, blocking cards anyway. So it's actually not even a big deal. But we're just going to use all of them just to get our ultimate ability powered up as much as I possibly can. And we can once again just do all of this. Let's use quick attack for a potential to get something good. Nothing good, though, unfortunately. I will indeed be using Pathfinder Ultimate Ability right now. And we're going to use Meditation right here. We'll use these two attacks as well. And boom, dead. <laughs> Basically, you just have to make sure you don't take any damage. And then the Pathfinder is going to do so much damage as time goes on. It really is so, so fun to play. I don't even know what the Berserker is going to be like because I played the Berserker in a previous version of the game and I got to say it was probably my least favorite class but I assume with the amount of changes that they've made with the other classes that that is just going to be super, super fun too. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. Okay, ah, nice. Okay, so now I can see a little bit of where we are going. Shadowy Presence, hello. It's you again, obviously. Did you come any closer to understanding where the power of these stones comes from? She sighs. You should have seen these majestic pillars, but it doesn't matter. Not anymore. The deal didn't change, though. Hand me the stones and you'll get something in return. Ah, here we go. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay, so I can trade rune stones for a new skill. So, in other words, I get one neutral card. Or I can trade it for damage. Gonna trade it for damage. <laughs> damage is definitely something I want to go for. Okay, so this I will trade. This I will trade. This I will trade. And there you go. And now she's gone. And now we're going to be fighting an enemy. I don't think I've seen this enemy before, so it might very well be someone that will devour our faces in no time. Oh no, I have actually seen these guys, but these are the bigger, bigger versions, as you can see. They're the adult flesh-eating grubs. They look very appetizing, don't they? Yes. <laughs> ah, the stuff of nightmares. Thank you. Okay, so let me see here. They're going to be dealing damage to me whether I like it or not, unfortunately. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? Okay, well, I guess I will use meditation then. I could use... I'm going to use this, actually. <gasps> nice! Okay, so this one's going to attack next. Okay, so that's great. There you go. Okay, so I actually did get focused. That was great. Very nicely done. And let's try... Oh, okay. He's he's dead. Okay, so now we can do stand our ground. Oh, I can basically do everything here if I want to. Wow, that was quite a hit. Boom. All right, nicely done. Not too bad. Rearrangement is something that I should basically always press, like in every single opportunity. Whenever I have rearrangement, just press it. It's so good. Okay, so otherwise, meditation, let's kill this. And it's not even going to be attacking yet, that's the thing. It doesn't even attack yet, so I don't even need to worry about it. As soon as those things get summoned, basically anything that gets summoned, it basically doesn't do anything on the first turn. 
And then you can pretty much just take your time and decide what you want to go for. Anyway, increase damage by 5%. That's actually a pretty nice one, but 5% is just not something that I really want to replace at the moment with my current rune stones. I think my current rune stones are doing pretty well for us right now. Okay, so how much money do I have? I have 585. That's not enough. That is not enough just yet. I really want to get that tier 3 rune stone. I want to get to higher levels of corruption as well. I feel like the developers have increased the replay replayability of the game by tenfold or a hundredfold even. I, I can't even believe that they were able to do this in three months. Literally, I can barely, uh, I, I don't know, I can barely like walk to my living room in three months. Like, you know, I mean, you know, it, that's an exaggeration obviously, but I'm just saying it's just so impressive. Anyway. Hmm, let's have a look. Uh, meditation. Uh, yeah, I think I'll just use quick attack here, actually. Rearrangement, give me that. Yeah. I like that rearrangement. And then we'll just use block just to get a little bit of an ultimate charge right there. And then we'll do all in, breathe, small strikes. Oh, insta-kill? What? How did we kill that guy? I have no idea. But we killed him. <laughs> uh, that was fun. All right, so Acid Bomb. This is not as good as the other thing, so it probably won't sell for as much. But, well, what can you do? Ah, now we can pick a new card. I like it, I like it. Okay, so Refreshing Breeze is fantastic. It is a zero-cost card that gives you one energy. I mean, how can you say no to that? But Double Pain, in my opinion, is probably one of the most powerful cards ever because it allows you to duplicate the next card played. Now, imagine this. You use Double Pain and then you use something like Rearrangement. Draw two cards, the cost is reduced by one. It's like, it's like a miniature breath control, but better. So I'm going to be taking Double Pain. That sounds really good. Whenever your energy is higher than three, increases the damage you deal by 100%. Mm hmm that seems pretty good. Each combat reduces the energy cost of the first, first stance card you play to zero. That actually seems pretty good. I'm going to be taking that, I think. Ooh, so good. The The synergy just increases it with the amount of time that you play in the game. It really is quite amazing. Okay, so let's have a look here. Ask to be healed. Yeah, I think... Oh, I could rob the... Sh <gasps> we could rob the shrine. And I'll get 500... I'm going to rob it. As you try to force the priestess into submission, she utters words that sound like slime sifting through dried reeds. Then she disappears into the weirdness. All right, so... <laughs> what? I can't be... Oh, dear. Can I be healed? No, I cannot. Oh, dear. Well, that's what you get for being an evil person. Oh, yes, that is what you get for being an evil person. But hopefully I'll be able to go back and speak to the guy that had that tier three runestone. That was the main reason why I actually even robbed the shrine to begin with. But it is going to be a lot of fun to find out whether this really does make a big difference or not. Maybe, uh, maybe I have um, completely messed myself up for no reason whatsoever. But let's have a look here. There we go. This is the thing that I wanted. Let's buy it. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that I can really sell back to him to kind of reduce the damage uh, to my purse? Maybe? Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit better. Some of these. Yeah, yeah some of that. There we go. Okay, so maybe, maybe something like that would be pretty good. All right, so I bought that. I still have 547. I can't heal myself any further, which is a terrible, terrible thing indeed. But... <laughs> I did it for a very good reason, and uh, I probably regret it very badly right now. Okay, yes, very good. Okay, so is there anything else that I want to do here? I probably want to do this. Increasing damage by six, and I probably should have gone for the unlocking the additional runestone for the armor, because then I would have been able to have two of these gars, uh, gar runestones on, and that would have made, well, it would have just done 40 damage per turn for free which is very powerful so it would have been uh, very cool for me to do that i'm actually going to try and kill the boss let's try and kill the boss shall we because i am probably the most powerful i could be right now and this guy is going to be murdering my face let's try it i'm very excited about this because if i can do this i think i'll probably be um in a pretty he took no damage Right. 
yeah, we gotta kill the alder tree first. Okay, so yes, Derenheim's life force is bound to the trees by blood and warped druidic magic. He cannot die unless the alder trees are cut down, and he cannot be hurt right now. Okay, good to know. <laughs> good to know, okay. So, let me play double pain and then I will play small strikes, even though it's not a good idea to do small strikes because it actually hits random enemies and it could very well attack something different, but I felt like having six hits instead of just two would be better. Even if half of the hits hit the wrong target, it still gives us more hits, I guess. So hopefully that's understandable. Otherwise, I'm gonna just do a normal attack against this guy and then we'll do stand our ground. I should have done that beforehand, actually. All right, he's gonna attack us twice. Let's do rearrangement. That's gonna give me this. We're gonna do breath control. Then we're gonna do quick attack. I already have two blocks. No, I do not have two blocks, but I am gonna get another block from Breathe, which is gonna be very useful. And I think we're pretty good to go through to the next round. There we go, not bad. And now I can do all in if I want to, or we could do rearrangement. I'm gonna do rearrangement again. Oh my, really? Ah. That's super good. That is super, super good. And you'll see exactly the reason why in just a second. Okay, look at this. Double pain for zero cost, and then all in, 100% increased damage. Bear in mind that I also have focus twice. So I now have 200% increased damage. And now I'm gonna use my ultimate ability that's gonna give me five additional energy. And then I will use, well, breath control because you know then it makes everything cost zero mm. crazy absolutely crazy okay so uh yeah i should probably do some of this so that i can gain more damage actually there we go oh so much damage oh look at that boom okay so now he's going to be dealing much more damage unfortunately oh hello that's his life essence. His will to live won't vanish without a fight. Aha, uh -huh. interesting. Okay, so now they're both going to be attacking me, as you can see. But this guy, oh wow, he really doesn't have that much. Um, <laughs> he has one HP. That's going to be super funny. Okay, so I have a lot of damage right here. I don't think I can lose at this point. I don't think I can lose at this point, so let's actually just see whether that is indeed the case. I'm gonna use Stand My Ground, I'm gonna use Quick Attack for a chance to get something else. Okay, Small Strikes, should kill him. There you go, he's dead. And now I can just do Small Strikes again. And then we are basically done, because I can just use my ultimate ability, get Small Strikes, and he's done. There you go. Boss downed, oh yeah, I like it. All right, so we get some more weird candles. And what's this? Weird stone heart allows you to brave weirdness without any repercussions. Has a bigger range and lasts two times longer than a regular weird candle. Hmm, sounds nice. Okay. Can I sell it though? <laughs> can I sell it for a good amount of money so I can buy another really, really good rune stone? Not even, not even entirely sure whether that rune stone really helped me that much. But uh, I think 30 damage per turn for free Automatically? I think that's pretty good. Anyway, riches the enemy's armor. Uh, whoa. Reduces enemy's armor by 100% damage until the end of turn? Uh, until the end of combat? Wow. I think I'm going to take piercing strike though, because next two turns might actually be more useful there. And then what do we have here? Fists of Stone, do you one hit for 300% damage, reduces target's armor until the end of combat. That is really, really powerful. But four hits for 100% damage, that's 400% right there. But advanced attack looks really good as well because the card returns to your hand immediately after it was played. Its cost can't be modified. Mm, that's the main problem here. I was actually wanting to take this just literally because it does seem like a very good attack because it does 50% more damage than normal attacks. Uh, like um, attack, for example, attacks for 100%. So I was thinking that that would be pretty cool, but I'm actually going to take Storm of... Um, you know what? No, I'm going to take Fist of Stone. 
Fist of Stone seems good. Ooh, reforge your rune. Oh, okay, what's this? Oh, ah, oh, this is cool. This is so cool. Okay, so let's have a look here. Whenever you use... Ultimate ability with 12 charges, reduce the energy cost of all drawn cards by one. Okay, that sounds very powerful. Whenever you use ultimate ability with six or more charges, gain three block. Okay, that's still pretty powerful, but I, I still think this is much better. When, when using the ultimate ability, draw one additional card for every three charges. That's actually really powerful too, but I'm actually going to be taking Perseverance. Before your dead enemy even topples to the ground, you hear a familiar voice behind you. As you turn, you see the goat-legged creature. Oh, this one was a piece of work. We had high hopes for him. He shrugs. Too bad it ended like that. But two down, two to go. I say you're doing pretty well for a newborn. And just like before, another path opened in your village. Also, getting rid of these... things gives me some space to help you out. Interested? Oh yeah, I am certainly interested, Mr. Goatman. Thank you very much. So yeah, so th this this guy is basically your little tutorial helper and he does explain a huge amount of backstory about where you are, what the weirdness is, and the, the world at large, basically. I won't spoil anything because it's actually really interesting and I'd highly recommend uh, checking it out for yourself if you're interested in Arthurian legend or in general any of this um, otherworldly stuff. So it definitely is going to be uh, very intriguing for you. But otherwise, I'm going to unlock a new armor slot as I said I was going to do. And there you go. Nice. All right. So let me actually just sort out my items here so we can see at a glance whether I have multiples of a particular one. We're going to be changing this over here. So now we deal 40 damage to all enemies every single turn for free, which is fantastic. We're also going to be putting this in there so that it reduces their armor by a certain amount too. And we're now going to make our way out of here. Um, do we have anywhere that I want to go? I have a lot of money, actually. Wait a minute. Hello, sir. I would like to purchase your rune stones. Do you have anything more for me? Let's have a look. Reflect 30% of damage received. Oh, we could get another one of these for 200, which would actually be pretty good. I'm going to take this, though, I think. Yes. Ooh, I have become, well, uh, death, I guess. I am become death. Mm. Yeah, let's let's go with that. Why not? And uh, let's have a look here. Okay, draw one additional card. No, we're going to be taking this one. Thank you very much. Look at that. 30% increased damage. Yes. Hmm. Very nice indeed. Okay, so I'm actually just going to move over here because I literally am so excited about how my character has turned out in this run that I would love to be able to just try out something here real quick. Oh, the damage. Oh, wow, that is crazy. Okay, so <laughs> let's just use all in here. Uh, do a little bit of damage. Um, I'm going to have to play a little bit properly, obviously. I can't just randomly do stuff, but uh, yeah, I think we'll be perfectly fine. That guy's already dead. And this guy's now dead. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, I'm loving this character. I am loving this character. It is so, so fun. Okay, so um, I actually want to continue playing, but I have played for about an hour now. And uh, obviously I'm going to have to edit all of this. So I don't really know. Oh, I really, you know, I actually want to continue playing, but I'm, I'm going to stop, okay? I'm going to stop. Uh, please do check out the link in the description if you are interested at all. Tainted Grail has just come so far and it is very enjoyable. And I, I know I say this basically every single time I play Tainted Grail, but it's actually really very much the case. After all these months, they've literally done so much. It's crazy. I, I, I can't believe it. Okay, well, um, yeah, check it out. Check it out. Link in the description. I uh, thank you very much for watching. And I'm going to... Would you, would you like to see more of this? Because I actually want to play more. But if you don't, then that's absolutely fine. I'll just play it by myself. But yeah, I'll see you next time.